Hello, everybody. It's once again the John T. Hill Show, the Stay Awake with John T. Hill. All right, tonight we're talking about the bombings at the Boston Marathon yesterday, or I should say on Monday because it's now Wednesday, early morning Wednesday, and I really couldn't talk much about it on Monday because I was actually battling a stomach virus and I was home from work, so um, here's my, here are my thoughts. First of all, we're not sure yet to, at this time who did it if it was a lone nut, one person, or if it was an organized attack. Um, <clears throat> anything's possible right now. Uh, you know, it, it, the likelihood is that it, more than likely it was a lone nut that decided to plant two bombs and make some kind of statement. Lord knows what that would be, but um, it, it reminds me a lot of the 1996 Olympic Park bombing. If you remember that, it was Eric Rudolph, a right-wing nut, who did that. And we all heard all sorts of theories. Islamic terrorists, um, you know, there were a lot of theories. They, they even had one guy, I can't remember the guy's name, that they practically ran into the ground because they thought this guy had done it. The Atlanta Journal-Constitution pretty much had convicted the guy before he even had a chance to be fully investigated by police. The poor guy eventually wound up dying a few years later because his life was pretty much ruined, even though uh, the evidence pretty much con concluded that he had nothing to do with it. But woe be it from the media to not go on a witch hunt, which of course they did, and sadly this could be happening here. There were talks of a Saudi national who was uh, uh, arrested, allegedly, or was questioned, or something like that, and apparently that's come to nothing. Apparently they uh, determined that, that was not part of uh, what happened, or he wasn't a part of what happened. <sighs> Let's face it. We know that incidents like this are always possible. Frankly, it surprises me that stuff like this doesn't happen more often, especially in wake of the fact that three years ago, in about two weeks, we will have gotten Osama bin Laden. Remember? It's been three years, actually. And um, there were so many people who talked about a backlash. Now, I want to stress, I'm not saying this is part of it, but think about it. How many places do you know where there are lots of people that gather together where security is minimum at best, if not non-existent? Think about it. No matter how tight we make security in this country, if we want to have a free country, we have to inevitably trust ourselves and trust everybody else around us to not do, do us harm. And we run the risk every day if we go out to a shopping mall that's crowded. Who's to say there's not somebody that has a belt bomb that decides that it's time to strike a blow for Allah or God or for some other cause, some other hero or something like that? And... It, it's a possibility. We can't live in fear. We know that that possibility is there. So, you know, it, it could possibly happen again. This is something that could inevitably happen at a street festival, at another marathon, at a parade. I was thinking, what if, my God, what if this happens at Dragon Con, at the Dragon Con parade? 
You have thousands of people lining the street. There's not, there are plenty of people with book bags, plenty of people with stuff. None of that stuff is checked. Who's to say somebody wouldn't come along, put something somewhere, walk away, hide it somewhere, and then the next thing you know, boom, boom. Um, it is a possibility. But that's possible no matter where you go. It could happen at your local uh, Christmas parade in a small town. I mean, this, this is the reason why, yeah, we have to remain vigilant, but we have to also be realistic. Every time you go to the big stores on Black Friday to go shopping, there is a possibility that somebody may come along and decide, hey, I don't like Christmas because it goes against Islam or goes against my atheism or goes against my uh, whatever, uh, my manifesto against capitalism or whatever, or commercialism or whatever. So I'm going to strike a blow by blowing myself up and making myself an example and killing a bunch of people while I'm at it. Yeah, and don't think there's not a left in lunatics because let's face it, we've seen plenty of shootings in this country and maybe that's the reason why we've not seen plenty of bombings. But say, why blow up something when you can shoot a bunch of people and not have to kill yourself, you know? Or not have to risk of being detected. You just take a rifle in somewhere and, you know, next thing you know, boom, boom, boom. You made your point. And it sadly happened a whole lot more. I mean, th this kind of stuff happens a lot. And we're almost, it's gotten to the point where it's disturbing. We accept it. Look at the Newtown shooting, the Sandy Hook <coughs> tragedy that happened last December. <clears throat> now you've got people who are criticizing the parents for, for, crit for wanting to dare to ask for some common sense gun regulations. This is stuff that quite frankly has been proposed before. It's just in a lot of this tragedy this stuff comes up again. Universal registration for, gu for gun owners. Not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, guns can kill people. Cars can kill people. You're registered for them. But, oh, we, got, we can't have any kind of regulation because the second amendment says the right to keep and bear arms shall not be impaired. Well, guess what? Um, that was then. This is now. Guns are a hell of a lot more lethal, a hell of a lot more accurate than they were back at that time when you had flintlocks. This day and age, you've got automatic machine guns. You've got semi-automatic rifles that can be turned into automatics very easily, from what I'm told. Um, so it, it's a different era. And people are violent by nature. Not everybody is violent by nature, but you, let's face it. How many times during a week are you mad at somebody that you want to punch them? You know, it may just be a flashing moment, it may just be a thought that, hey, you know, I'd really like to whack that person one time, just for the hell of it, you know, because they pissed you off. It may be somebody that is a family member that you love, but for that one moment, you just want to smack them, or if it's the bag boy who crushes your bread and breaks your eggs, or if it's somebody that pulls out in front of you and such, we have that tendency in us. It's a primal tendency, and it's don't, there's nothing to be ashamed of it because everybody has it. It's having to uh, learn to get, not act upon that that's, that's important. Some of us do better than others. Some of us, the vast majority of us, never lay a finger on somebody in our lives. Or if we do, the worst thing we ever do is in high school or middle school or grade school, we might get a little dust up, bruise the other guy, and we get suspended for a couple of days and have to go home and mom and dad get really honked off because you aren't supposed to fight in school. Or maybe they're proud their son stood up for themselves. Then again, you get the people that, for some reason, let their anger boil over and the next thing you know, Sandy Hook happens, Aurora happens. Maybe this is a case like that. Then again, what if this were a terrorist act? 
doesn't necessarily mean it was a foreign terrorist. It could, it may not be a Muslim terrorist. Remember, Oklahoma City happened by a domestic terrorist, Timothy McVeigh. This could very well be something like that. We can't jump to conclusions about this. We've got to let the FBI do their investigation. We can't give in to the conspiracy theorist like Alex Jones, the lunatic nut job that he is, blaming the government even before they'd even had a chance to um, bring in any of the FBI. And it's ridiculous when you have lunatics out there that make up these conspiracy theories and people believe them without actually going, you know, maybe the government really isn't after to get us because A, there's 300 million of us and there's not that many of them and, you know, we hate the government but we think the government can't really do anything right but yet they want to come after us. They're not exactly doing a good job of coming after us if that's the case. I mean, I hate to say it, but I don't really feel oppressed in this country. Do you? Not really. Oh, but maybe my Christianity is being repressed because I can't have my uh, I can't have my kid say a prayer in school, or I should say, have the teacher tell the kid to pray. <laughs> yeah, I could go on and rant about that. So. Oh, by the way, the fine folks at Westboro Baptist Church are going to protest the funerals because they believe God meant for these bombs to happen because America loves the gay people. Uh, President Obama, could you do me a real solid? Could you exempt or take the tax exemption away from Westboro Baptist Church? Give them something really to bitch about. Take that away from them. And say, no, you're no longer a religious group. You're a political group. You're staging political protests, organizing them, fundraising for them. Where do they get all this money to do these protests? I wonder. I mean, it's, they're not a big church. Who funds these people? I mean, they're, they're not that rich. I mean, they can't be that rich. If they, are, if they have businesses, they ought to be boycotted. Cut the funding away from these people and they'd go away. You know, how, how do they get the money for all this? They can't be that rich. It seems like every time something like this happens, oh, they got to go protest. What are they going to do? P protest Pat Summerall's funeral? Because... He was killed because the gay, there's a gay in the NFL, so Pat Summerall had to die, and we got to go protest his funeral. Oh, George Bernard Shaw died today. Uh, apparently, Billy Graham likes the gay people, so that means we got to go protest George Bernard Shaw's, George Bernard Shaw's, uh, or Shay's video, uh, not video, but funeral. That's their way of thinking. <clears throat> They protested Roger Ebert's funeral because allegedly he was such a big supporter of the gays that they had to go and spread their hatred. They're a joke. They're an absolute joke. They deserve to be mocked. Why get angry with them? They're idiots. Jesus taught people to love people. And, they, and these people are saying God hates fags. Is that stupid or what? What good does that accomplish? God hates fags. Oh, really? Oh, really? Oh, God. But, let's face it. We could go all paranoid about this, and we're going to be this way for a long time, because we're always scared there's going to be a copycat bomber that, that's going to do something in a similar thing, going, hey, I can go on the internet because I've got a grudge against people. I hate people. I'm going to go on the internet. I'm going to look up how to make one of these bombs that apparently this guy did in a pressure cooker. Uh, I couldn't really say, guy, this might actually be a woman for all we know. Who knows? And just say, hey, I'll go make one of these. And at the 
nearby Veterans Parade, Memorial Day Parade, because Memorial Day is coming up, or whatever kind of parade there is, hey, it's a big gathering of people. I'll plant this there. Nobody will ever know the difference. The next thing you know, boom, I kill a few people, make, make myself feel really, really good. Because I did something for my God or for my political cause or for my paranoia or for my voices in my head or whatever that is. It's sad, really. You got people that lost limbs on Monday. And the only crime they did was go to a marathon and watch people finish a marathon to cheer them on. That was their crime, apparently. They live in a free country where they can go and, and watch a marathon. An eight-year-old kid died. And that kid's brother lost his legs. The mom has a brain has gotten brain damage, apparently, from the shrapnel. She may die. The member of the family that survived was a murder in the marathon. So, yeah, there were over, what, 170 injuries? And we're not talking minor injuries. There, there were a lot of amputations. So whoever did this, and let's face it, there is a, a chance we may never find out who this person is. Because it took years to find out, years to find Eric Rudolph. It's important to have patience with this. And to not look at it from a 9-11 perspective. But to look at it from a perspective of what happened in 1996 in Atlanta at the Olympic Park bombing. That could have been a lot worse. Uh, there, that apparently, from what I understand, there weren't a lot of people around where that backpack was that Eric Rudolph placed there. So luckily, only two people died, and one of them was had died of a heart attack because of it. The other died directly from. I think it was a young woman died directly from the bombing itself. But thankfully, that was there weren't that many injuries, from what I understand. But it could have been a lot worse. And let's face it, there is a possibility this was a right-wing group that did this. Remember, a right-wing group, a right-wingers did the 95 bombing in Oklahoma City, a 96 bombing in, in, in uh, Atlanta. It's possible this was another right-wing group. Then again, you never know. It's, it, anything's possible right now, folks. All I know is I didn't do it because I was in Forest City, or actually in Rutherford at the time, um, basically barfing my head off. So I can't. I know I didn't do it because I've, I've never actually been to Boston. So I've never been close to Boston. But let's face it, there are a lot. There's a lot of questions going on. A lot of people wanting answers. And as the days and weeks and months go by. There aren't going to be that many easy answers. It's important to understand that, a, that an investigation like this, especially when they had no idea, <clears throat> and contrary to popular belief, our intelligence community is actually very, very good. Now, granted, they don't always communicate well with each other, but generally they're very, very good. And... They didn't hear anything about a possible attack. So this leads me to believe it was a lone nut job that did this. Or perhaps two or maybe a small group of people that coordinated this. Now there's been, there's been this picture floating around the internet about the guy on top of the roof. And there is a possibility this person may have been involved. But an even stronger possibility exists this person may just very well have been someone watching the marathon or may have been somebody that heard the explosion, looked out a window, couldn't see what was going on, went to the roof of the building and looked down and saw what was going on. I would venture to guess this person's already been talked to by the police and or the FBI 
And more likely than not, this person may not even have been involved. Because who's to say there weren't other people on other tops of other buildings? So it's important not to jump to conclusions. So right now, right now, we're all scared. We're not scared that we're scared of what might happen in the next few days, few weeks, when large public gatherings happen again in areas that aren't as secure as, say, a football stadium or a baseball stadium or a basketball arena. Um, this past Friday, I was in both the um, Asheville Mall and the, uh, what's the other one they've got there? I can't think of it. It's the other big mall they've got. The not so built. I think it's Biltmore Mall or something like that. I can't remember what the name of it is. But it's the other mall they've got in Asheville. The one that's not as good. But there were plenty of people in Asheville Mall. It wasn't crowded, crowded, but it was fairly decently busy. All right. Let's say it's a very busy shopping night, a Friday night or Saturday night during the holiday season. Place is packed. Um. You got a, you got somebody that drops a book bag near a place. There's a lot of people gathering. They've got this little jump thingy, this trampoline thingy. They've got that sometimes gets a lot of people gathered around and such. Or maybe there's a exhibition going on. They say they say Santa's there or something like that. Think about it. Well, let's say there's a a pageant or something like that or, or something at a mall or something where they, there's an attraction of quite a few people. There's going to be a couple of street festivals coming to this local area very, very soon. Um, who's to say somebody might decide it? I mean, it, it, there are the, the possibilities are endless. It's summertime's coming up. You're going to have a lot more outdoor activities. You're going to have parades. You're going to have festivals. You're going to have this, that, and the other. County fairs, state fairs, local fairs. Little um, little uh, rinky-dink festivals where they have the little rides and such from these little carnies and carny companies and all this. So yeah, everybody's going to be kind of a little bit nervous about this. They're going to be looking around, seeing that person with the book bag or the backpack or 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 whatever, and or they're going to think, hey, maybe this person's up for something. And more often than not, that person's not doing anything, but you never know in this day and age. And that's the sad part about it. That's the world we live in post-9-11. But we've always had this threat. It's, not, it's nothing unusual. Look at what happened to Kennedy. It was, it was a, you know, if you've ever known, if you've ever heard how the president, when the president's there coming in, uh to a particular, let's say he's visiting Asheville. They're going to do a thorough check of the entire route. They're going to make sure every possible potential area for an assassin to strike is taken out. I mean, it's, it's covered, it's checked, and everything. But it's not perfect. I mean, if somebody really wanted to, if they had a rocket-propelled grenade, and they had the capability of getting it to where they wanted to in an area where that wasn't checked. It's a possibility. Look at this past January. You had the inauguration. It's hundreds of thousands of people attended. There's a possibility there. It could always happen. You never know. That's what freedom is all about. There's the risk that something like this could happen. Do you run in fear and recoil from it and want the state to protect you from every possible thing and, and result in the one thing you really don't want and which is basically a police state? We can't have that. If you want freedom, there's going to be risk. And that risk is finding out that a lunatic is just taking your life because A, he's either shot you in the head or 
killed you in some other way with a gun, or B, he's blown you up. But there's always a risk for you to walk out in front of a bus tomorrow. Or, you know, uh, there's an accident that kills you. It's a possibility. We're not guaranteed anything in life. We're not guaranteed tomorrow, not realistically. I could go to work tomorrow. On the way to work, somebody just T-bones the car I'm in. Next day you know I'm in a morgue. That's a possibility. We know this. We don't want to confront it. We don't want to face it. That little kid, 80-year-old kid that died had no idea he was going to die at the finish line. Nor did his family have an idea. Nor did his dad running the race had any idea. None of them had any idea they were going to do it, that it was going to happen. But it happened. That bombing could have easily happened at a grocery store, a crowded grocery store on Friday afternoon. Or at a Walmart. Frankly, I'm surprised nothing like that's ever happened at a Walmart. In all honesty. And let me, let me tell you a little something that, I've, that scared me. Have you ever been in a Walmart on a fri uh, Black Friday? It's insane. Now, when I worked there, I never actually had to work during the actual crush of the event. But it's insane. People are crazy. They're, they're out of their minds trying to get these deals. If I'm a bomber, if I really want to take out a bunch of people, that's a perfect place to do it. And in the resulting chaos, you know, and who's to say? You might drop your book bag somewhere and it looks like a bunch of other book bags next thing you know. Well, <laughs> anything's possible. It's a possibility, folks. That's the world we live in. Post 9-11, and now post this. It is a realistic possibility that we have to face up to, ladies and gentlemen, that there is a decent chance that this will happen again it may not happen for another 10, 12, 15 years. It may happen tomorrow. It may happen outside an arena where people are tailgating or something like that for the baseball game or basketball game or something like that. Um, you know, it could be a, a high school event or something like that. It could be for prom. You know, let's say some kid decide and some to a kid decides to go to a prom with his date and they're both, let's say, really, really religious and they, say, they see all the inequities and, and the sin and all that so they decide, hey, I'm going to strike a blow for Jesus and I'm going to kill myself or amongst all these people who are committing sin by fornicating on prom night. It's a possibility. They're, this, this stuff is going around people's heads. You don't think craziness happens? It does. But we have to be vigilant. We have to be ready. We have to keep our eyes and ears open. Because you never know. And yeah, it's not, it's not a police state if you're a concerned citizen and you see something or hear something or find out something that could potentially result in something like this. It's your civic duty to, to stop it. Well, folks, that's all for tonight. Let's pray for the victims of this attack, both those who've lost their lives and also those who've been hurt, as well as the families. And, you know, even if the person didn't have, people that didn't have physical injuries, there's going to be a lot of mental trauma from this. And let's pray for those people, too. Thank you for listening, folks. Have a great day, and we'll talk to you later. Good night, good luck, and may the good news be yours.